Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we dive into the depths of myth and emerge with the pearls of history. Today, we embark on a journey through the enchanting and perilous waters of mermaid lore. Have you ever wondered where the tales of these sea maidens originated? Join us as we unravel the threads of their stories, from ancient civilizations to the modern day. Are you ready to explore the mystical world beneath the waves? Let's set sail into the unknown. Tales of mermaids have been spoken about since humanity learned how to write, but how and when did their stories and the possibility of their existence spring up? Where did they originate? Did they come from sailors' tales of sightings, or were they known even before that? Myths and legends about mermaids followed the course of human history from the birth of ancient civilizations to the modern times when they have become part of popular culture and fantasy tales. Their modern name comes from the French words mer, sea, and maid, girl or young woman, symbolizing their beauty and life at the sea. However, stories from the past do not describe them as passive and vulnerable as the modern tales do. Sometimes, they were portrayed as powerful vengeful water spirits who brought storms, misfortune and death to ones who traveled across the oceans, rivers, and lakes. Greek mythology contains stories of the god Triton, the merman messenger of the sea, and several modern religions including Hinduism and Kandambal worship mermaid goddesses to this day. One of the earliest depictions of a mermaid came from Syrian mythology. A targetus, also known as Dercido or the Syrian goddess, was half-woman half-fish deity of the ancient city Hierapolis Bambus in Syria. Mermaids described in ancient Greece are close to the type of mermaids we believe in today. A famous Greek folktale claimed that Alexander the Great's sister, Thessaloniki, was transformed into a mermaid and lived in the Aegean Sea after her death in 295 BC. If she spotted a ship, she would ask the sailors, is King Alexander alive? If the sailors answered correctly by saying, he lives and reigns and conquers the world, Thessalonike would let them continue ahead without harm. If they fail to answer her this way, it will anger her, and she will conjure a rough sea storm, dooming the ship and dragging the sailors to the bottom of the ocean. Greek mythology remains one of the most common ways that readers are introduced to the concept of mermaids. This includes the famed Odyssey written by Homer, in which Odysseus encounters a variety of sea creatures, including sirens, a form of mermaids, who use their stunning beauty and melodic voices to lure sailors to their doom. The Greeks were afraid of mermaids, and they called them sirens, dangerous creatures who lured the sailors to the sea with their songs and drowned them. A similar belief was held in the British Isles, where sailors regarded mermaids, sirens and sea nymphs as evil spirits of the sea and bad omens. Other stories claim that mermaids and mermen tried to climb aboard ships in the middle of the ocean, causing the ship to list to one side. Many however accepted mermaids as the good-willed creatures that are extremely shy but also very curious about life above the sea. Chinese legends speak that tears of elusive sirens form the most beautiful pearls on earth, Chinese sailors thought that sirens can grant immortality to the worthy man. They were seen as gentle, mild, and a blessing of the sea in Irish held belief that mermaids are calling the sailors to the sea with their songs as the sign of love. Persian viewed mermaids not as half-fish, but also as complete human beings that were able to live in the sea. In the many stories that were written about them there are depicted as beautiful men and women who can have children with ordinary people, and their children can also live in the sea if they want so. Similar creatures to mermaids can also live in lakes and rivers. In Slavic mythology there are the Rusalkas, the spirits of young women who have met their fate through drowning. Rusalkas are the Slavic counterpart of the Greek sirens and naiads, often seducing sailors to their doom. The nature of Rusalkas varies among folk traditions, but according to ethnologist D.K. Zelenin they all share a common element. They are the restless spirits of the unclean dead. They are usually the ghosts of young women who died a violent or untimely death, either by murder or suicide, before their wedding, especially by drowning. Rusalkas are said to inhabit lakes and rivers. They appear as beautiful young women with long pale green hair and pale skin, suggesting a connection with floating weeds and days spent underwater in faint sunlight. They can be seen after dark, dancing together under the moon and calling out to young men by name, luring them to the water and drowning them. The characterization of Rusalkas as both desirable and treacherous is prevalent in Russia, Ukraine and Belarus, and was emphasized by 19th-century Russian authors. Christopher Columbus also had an encounter with mermaids. Tuesday, January 8, 1493, was a windy day. Columbus had already landed in Hispaniola, the Greater Antilles, and he was already preparing for the trip back. The crew was replenishing the ship's water supply. While supervising the crew, Columbus saw golden specks on the barrel hoops. Curious about their source, he navigated up what he called the Golden River. The following day, he reported that he had seen mermaids, but they weren't as beautiful as people paint them, his diary reads. Their faces resembled men's. Columbus was surprised by mermaids' appearance. He described them as ugly, masculine, and rough beings. 
people from the medieval ages assumed mermaids were as organic as fishes. Even then, they were mystical creatures that reside in the sea. Mermaids were commonly featured in medieval churches to represent lust, one of the seven deadly sins. Mermaid tales are woven into the fabric of cultures worldwide, each with a unique twist. In Japan, the kappa are curious beings, small like children but wild in appearance, with faces resembling monkeys and shells akin to turtles. These creatures are known for their mischievous nature, often challenging humans to games with high stakes, and they have a notorious reputation for preying on lone swimmers. Have you ever imagined encountering a kappa during a swim? What game do you think they would challenge you to? Korean legends also speak of mermaids, but here they are benevolent, seen as goddesses who foretell storms and protect seafarers from harm. In the Indian epic, the Ramayana, we meet Suvanamaka, the golden mermaid. This princess, a daughter of the demon king Ravana, initially attempts to thwart the hero Hanuman's efforts to build a bridge. Yet, in a twist of fate, she falls deeply in love with him. Brazil's folklore introduces us to Ayera, the Lady of the Lake. This eternal water nymph, with her striking green hair and fair skin, is known to enchant men with her song, drawing them into her aquatic realm to spend eternity. Across the vast landscapes of Africa, Mami Wada reigns as the mother of waters. Once worshipped for granting beauty, health, and wisdom, she is a complex figure, her image a tapestry of African, European, and Hindu influences. These enchanting stories from around the globe invite us to explore the depths of our imagination and the mysteries of the sea. Do you think there's a grain of truth in these legends, or are they simply captivating tales meant to explain the unexplainable? Let's dive into this ocean of myths together and share our thoughts. Up to today, there have been some unusual stories about mermaids. Back in August 2009, many people claimed they saw a mermaid jumping high out of the sea in Haifa Bay and performing flips in the air. Because of this, the town near the coast, Kiryat Yam, promised to give $1 million to anyone who could prove the mermaid was real. Then, in February 2012, a strange thing happened in Zimbabwe. Workers at two water storage areas near the towns of Gakwe and Mutare stopped their work. They said they wouldn't continue because mermaids were bothering them and making them leave the work sites. This incident was even talked about by the minister in charge of water, Samuel Sapipa Komu. As we reach the end of our voyage on Celestial Chronicles, we're left to ponder the enduring allure of mermaids. What is it about these creatures that captivates us? Is it their beauty, their mystery, or the danger they represent? Could there be a shred of truth in the sailor's tales of yore? Share your thoughts and join the conversation. Until next time, keep your eyes on the horizon and your heart open to the mysteries of the deep. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Chronicles of the Celestial.